Today we're looking at Ancient Land of East by Masaya Hashimoto, who designed, directed, and programmed the game back in 1987. Now this game was originally made for the PC-8801, which was a Japanese exclusive computer, and one that actually produced a couple other Apple IIGS game conversions, Silphied and Thexter. Now Ancient Land of East was ported to practically every system of the time, and depending on the platform, you might also know it by the name East One, Ancient East Vanished, and East the Vanished Omens. So East is an RPG, and being a guy who rarely likes RPGs, I was surprised to find myself completely addicted to this one. I knew practically nothing about the game going in other than it was an RPG and, well, it was available for the 2GS. And so just out of curiosity, I tried it out. Alright, so what is this game all about? Well, in traditional RPG style, the game takes place in ancient times in a fictional place where a great evil is sweeping over the land and the people need a hero to save them. In this case, the land is Land of East, and the hero, played by you, is called Eric. Now, I know in other versions of the game his name is Adol, and I'm thinking that maybe the company that converted this thought that Adol was too similar to Adolf, especially for American audiences, and so they probably just changed the name. I'm just guessing here, but that seems to make sense. Now, the great evil in the game are demons who have been awakened after centuries in slumber and are summoned by some evil dude called Maleficus. Yes, Maleficus, as in Maleficent, Malevolence, Malicious, Malignant, take your pick, he's evil. Now I'm trying to picture this guy's parents coming up with a name like Maleficus. I mean, really, what were they expecting he would grow up to be? Surely nothing good. So you'll want to wander around the town and converse with some of the town folk. Stand aside, someone has been hurt. You know who I am? I'm Dr. Elar, that's who. What a dick. Let's talk to his twin brother, see what he has to say. Just a short time ago, I saw the owner of the pawn shop putting away a sapphire ring. I was shocked. The ring is stolen property. He knows better than to deal in such things. So we get one of our first hints of the game. And actually, this hint isn't even vital to beating the game at all. I actually didn't even realize this hint when I first played it. I just rushed off to battle, and uh, I should have probably talked to more people in the town first, but what you want to do is go to this bar and talk to the one-eyed man, and he'll basically tell you that he bought a sapphire ring with all his hard-earned money, and he lost the ring, and he's ashamed, and he thinks that somebody actually might have stolen it. And so, okay, so somebody stole his ring, and then you know that the pawn shop owner suddenly got a sapphire ring, and so, obviously, you want to go to the pawn shop. And you want to see what's going on. And see what this guy has to offer. And sure enough, there you have a sapphire ring. So you want to buy it. It's a thousand gold pieces, which is your entire life savings. But trust me, you want to buy it, because you're going to make a little profit on this transaction. So you leave the pawn shop and you head back to the bar, which is only two stores away, so it's pretty sad this guy couldn't figure that out, but that's okay. I feel a little guilty taking advantage of him, but you want to go back there and talk to him again. And he'll be all happy to see the ring, and he's actually going to give you 1,500 gold pieces just for returning it to him, even though he could have just walked two stores over and bought it for 1,000. But hey, I'm not going to complain. Now I have some extra spending cash. So you want to go to the south end of the town, and you're going to see some stores there. And here you can buy some armor and some weapons. And so first you can see we can buy a suit of armor or a shield. So I'll go ahead and buy a shield. And let's see, how about a medium? 2,000 gold pieces. Okay, how about a small shield? 700, okay, why not? I'll take it. Alright, then walk over next door and pick up your sword. Short sword will have to do, because I don't think I can afford any of the other ones. So as you continue walking around town, you want to make your way to the west side. 
And here you're going to find a fortune teller that's actually going to give you very important information and a very important item as well. But right now, she's not going to tell you anything because you're not equipped as a swordsman yet. To be a swordsman, you need a sword, shield, and armor. So currently, I'm just missing the armor. But I need some extra spinning cash to get that. So in order to get more gold, you actually have to start defeating some enemies. And although I do have a sword and shield, I can't use them until I go to my inventory and select them. And that goes for most items in the game. Now what's kind of neat about this game, and I don't know if you can actually see it, but he's now actually holding a sword and a shield. Like the character is actually holding those items. Whereas the character wasn't holding anything before. So that's pretty impressive for a game back in the 80s to have that sort of a feature. Alright, so here we're outside of the town walls. And so you want to go ahead and start killing some enemies. Now, East has a very interesting attack system. You don't actually press any buttons to thrust your sword or anything like that. You simply walk up and make contact with the enemy. As long as you're facing toward them and they're facing somewhere else, you take off damage. If you're both facing each other, it's pretty much a 50-50 chance who's going to strike the first blow. I've also noticed that if you sort of hit them off-center, it's actually going to take off more damage. Now obviously the enemies are going to get more difficult as you progress through the game as they start to face toward you and move more quickly. Get used to this game over screen because you're going to be seeing it a lot. There's an abandoned mine just northeast of the village you came from and although there's a lot of cool stuff in here that you're going to want to get, I wouldn't even bother until you've leveled up a couple times and you have more powerful weapons. Otherwise, it's one hit deaths. Good luck with that. So once you're better equipped, you can come back to the caves and you'll discover that it's several layers deep. Now there are a lot of items to be had here and so you want to search every nook and cranny of this place. Unfortunately, your visibility is restricted as you can see and so that's going to make exploring this place rather difficult. Now watch out for these boulder things. They are vicious. Go! Die! Motherfuck! Whew! Okay. But it was all worth it. Because in this treasure chest, we have the heal ring. Now this will actually replenish your health while you're in the tower and while you're in the cave. And so it is vital that you have this thing. The only caveat is you have to stand still, or it won't replenish. Oh, son of a bitch! The hell did he come from? Alright, so once you go back to the fortune teller, she's actually going to explain what you have to do in this game. So basically, there are six ancient books which contain all of the secrets of the ancient land of East. With these books combined, the possessor will have incredible strength. Currently, all six books are under the control of Maleficus, and soon he will be unstoppable, and so it's up to you to find the books and defeat him. Five of the books are guarded by various monsters, and the sixth is actually guarded by Maleficus himself, so you'll have to kill him to get the book. The books are scattered in various places, such as the cave and this ancient holy temple that I'm currently approaching. Now this temple, it's kind of a sanctuary in this first room because none of the enemies are going to be in there. So you can actually take a minute to breathe. So here you have these six statues. The fortune teller actually gave you a crystal that's going to let you pass through one of the statues. And this is going to take you to various maze-like rooms that you just want to maneuver around and you'll find a couple items here and there. Oh joy, a ruby! I actually found no purpose for the ruby other than to sell it to the pawn shop guy and get some money for it. So after wandering around a bit, you'll discover this room here, and this leads to your first boss battle. And he's actually pretty dang easy, 
Unfortunately, if you don't have the right equipment, you're not even going to be able to phase him. So you can try all you want, but you will inevitably die. Now come back when you're equipped, and he is a cinch. Probably one or two hits and he'll be dead. The game offers quite a variety of bosses, all with their own characteristics and weaknesses. And one of the most recognizable has got to be Mr. Grasshopper himself, who shoots boomerangs at you. Where do they come up with this stuff? So random. In addition to the addictive gameplay and really cool level design, what I love about this game is the music, especially in this stage. So eventually you're going to want to find a backdoor entrance to the upper towers above the Holy Temple. And I'm not going to give away that location just in case you guys want to play this on your own. But what I should point out is once you're in the tower, the doors are locked and there's no going back. Now these towers are humongous. I think it's like 30 stories tall or something. And so some of the levels are actually pretty complicated. They're sort of like a maze. And so I did have to draw out a map of exactly where I was and uh, how I get from point A to point B. And there you can see some jail cells. And that's kind of strange. Why would there be jail cells there? That can't be a good sign. And so if you go up a couple floors and you make your way over to this entrance here, uh, you'll soon find out why those jail cells are there. Because you are going to be the newest occupant of one of them. You awake in a jail. When you check your belongings, you let out a cry of alarm for several of your valuable possessions have disappeared. And so you go and you talk to your cellmate. His name's Ota Zakin, and he's actually the husband of one of the women you spoke to in one of the villages earlier. But he basically tells you that an old man disappeared in one of the hallways that are lined with stone statues. And so you need to get out of here and go find that hallway. And luckily, this guy right here breaks through the wall, and he's there to rescue you. This is a dangerous place. Yeah, you think? And uh, so he basically tells you that there's an old man that lives in the tower named Alden, and he needs your help. He's very upset, and so this guy wants you to give him an idol. And once you deliver this idol to him, he'll give you more information. So you'll make your way back to the hallway lined with stone statues, and here you want to put on your mask of eyes, and this is going to reveal a secret doorway. And then of course it's in this room that you're going to find that old man. And if you're wearing the mask of eyes, I don't know if you noticed, but you can't actually see any enemies or any people, and so you want to take it off and then go talk to this guy. Thank you for finding my idol. Put this necklace on if you plan to stay in this tower. It will protect you from evil forces. And don't forget me, I'm Alden. So with your necklace on and your sword in hand, it's up the tower you go. And obviously you want to search every single corner of this place, because if you miss some valuable item that you actually need later on, you have to go all the way back down the tower to get it. And yes, I'm speaking from experience, unfortunately. So you'll come to this door, but no matter how hard you try, you can't pass through it. That's because only evil things can pass through. And so you have to put on this evil ring to become evil. Don't you just love how logical this game is? So you'll come up to this young girl, Leah, 
and you actually met her before in the town that you came from. But she's basically here to give you some important information on how to defeat Maleficus. So she says, I warn you, his cape is woven of a powerful material that can only be penetrated by a sword of Kururia. She then gives you an item. I have a special pair of glasses for you. Great, so I need a sword of Kururia and she gives me glasses. Yeah, I'll tell you where you can put those glasses. Oh, they call them spectacles. Fancy. Okay, so I discovered this really weird glitch in this game, and I don't know if this is present on other versions. I forget which floor this is on, but you want to go to the floor where you have these goons break through the wall. Go ahead and just start killing them one by one. And you have to time it and sort of position it just perfectly, but what'll happen is the sound's going to start to get jacked up, and it's going to start to play sort of out of tune and offbeat. And what'll happen is the system will just freak out and not know what to play. There we go. Oh yeah! Unclaimed sound interrupt. I wonder if this is the original blue screen of death. There's a couple maze rooms that you're going to come across. This is actually the second of the two. And actually it's the easier of the two as well, which is kind of strange. But here, once you go through this final mirror, you're going to face off against a couple twin heads. And they're really easy. You just want to hit the gold one and avoid those fireball things. And so slowly but surely, you'll be able to destroy these guys. So then, obviously, you want to go through this door. And this is going to take you to the final hallway, to the final door, to face off against Maleficus. So here we go. When I touched the door, a sharp pain shot through my entire body. It must be protected by a powerful force of some kind. What the shit? Yes, this is actually the message I received after painstakingly making my way up the tower. And so I obviously missed some critical item somewhere. And I'm not going to tell you what it is or where it was, because you know what? If I had to suffer through it, you're going to have to suffer through it. I know that's cruel. Uh, message me if you actually want to know what it is, or there's probably a walkthrough or something online. Anyway, I went all the way down to a specific level of the tower, got the item, and traveled back up. And then I finally found Maleficus. I'm not even sure what this thing is supposed to be, but man is it ugly. Whatever it is, here we go. The Battle of the Ages. So after exchanging some cheesy dialogue, it's time to do battle. So this guy basically floats around the screen, and you have these exploding fireballs that keep re-emerging. And you basically just want to cut him as much as possible, and I usually try to just travel along the same path that he's traveling, all while avoiding the holes that he makes and the fireballs. Come on. Almost got you. Oh, come on! After several attempts, I was finally able to push this guy. And you get the last book of East, the book of Maleficus. And so you can see I have all six of them in there now. And so you want to use the spectacles that Leah gave you. And go ahead and read the last book. Book of Maleficus. On this brilliant dawn, the attack has finally ended. We don't know why we have been spared, but it is a time to rejoice. In the event of the evil reappearing, we have placed the sum of our powers in these six volumes of the Book of Ys. He who has all the books of Ys will be able to lead the way to peace and become the savior of Ys. And that is Ancient Land of Ys. Honestly, this is one of the best games I've played in quite some time, and not just for the Apple IIgs system. As I mentioned earlier, I tend to stay away from most RPGs, especially ones with a turn-based attack system. I love games that depend on quick reflexes and strategy, so taking turns throwing spells at each other just isn't for me. East is obviously an action RPG, and a damn challenging one at that. Another thing I find discouraging about some RPGs is half the time I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to be doing. East has a couple areas like that, but very few. And luckily, the main overworld is small enough 
or I'll figure it out sooner or later. It took me about a week to beat this game, playing it one to two hours a day. So anyways, definitely a game worth checking out, so thank you for watching.